Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable colleagues, I rise to speak to the report of the Standing Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Trade on Bill C-282. First, I would like to commend the work of the committee chair, Senator Beam, and all of the committee members for this in-depth study of the bill. We heard from many witnesses, the vast majority of whom provided insightful clarification on the ins and outs of Bill C-282. I also thank Senator Harder, who worked uh, tirelessly to prepare an amendment for us based on one of the views heard in committee. Colleagues, you will not be surprised that I strongly oppose this amendment, which takes away most of the strength and intent of the bill. Indeed, what is the objective sought by Bill C-282? It is clear and unambiguous. It is a matter of completely removing supply management from the negotiating table when any new free trade agreement existing agreement or soon to be renewed agreement is concluded. What is the effect of the amendment adopted by the committee? It excludes the following elements from the scope of the bill. A. International trade treaty or agreement that existed upon the coming into force of that subsection. B renegotiation of an international trade of such a treaty or agreement an interna C an international trade treaty or agreement that was being negotiated upon the coming into force of that subsection reading this amendment it is clear that the scope of the exclusions make the bill at best symbolic at worst, completely ineffective. The effect of this amendment is to exempt the application of the bill from existing or future trade agreements with our major partners. Therefore, if the amendment were adopted by the Senate chamber, supply management would still be a potential target for most of our trading partners and could still be used as a bargaining chip. As was the case for the conclusion of our last agreements, CETA, CPTPP, and COSMA. C-282, it should be remembered, is not just any private member's bill. It was supported by all party leaders in the House of Commons by a very large majority of 262 votes to 51 votes. Moreover, the bill follows four motions supported unanimously for supply management to be fully protected. Two in 2005 and 2017 as part of the rene renegotiation of NAFTA and two in 2018 as part of the conclusion of the CPTPP. Dear colleagues, I believe that this amendment is based on concerns that are not founded on objective facts, quite the contrary. One of the concerns was mentioned several times that the bill would impede the ability of our negotiators to make the best trade deals for Canada, first of all. It's interesting to note that this position implies 
it's not possible to reach an agreement without making concessions on supply management. In other words, it's necessary to sacrifice supply management to get good deals. On September 25th, Doug Forsyth, Director General for Market Access and Trade Controls at Global Affairs Canada, appeared before our committee. He confirmed that our country was able to conclude 12 advantageous free trade agreements in the past without conceding anything on supply management. I think this demonstrates that it is entirely possible to protect supply management while still getting great deals for Canadians. This includes other export-oriented sectors and supply managed products are essentially domestically oriented. Mr. Forsyth also to the committee that in free trade negotiations, the number of chapters dedicated to agriculture is usually one out of 30. And supply managed agricultural sectors occupy only part of that single chapter. Therefore, it cannot be seriously argued, colleagues, that supply management alone is such that it could derail concluding free trade agreements. It was reported to the committee that supply management would be targeted again by our main trade partner, the United States, with the return of President Trump. I think this is exactly why we must take a clear position to protect supply management now and forever. On the other hand, I think that procrastinating in the face of this red line is an admission of weakness when it comes to negotiations. Witnesses told us that all countries can establish red lines. We heard during committee testimony that Canada would not be the only one protecting its essential sectors. Mr. Tom Rosser, Assistant Deputy Minister at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, confirmed on September 25th before the committee that the United States imposes strict quotas on cotton and sugar and Japan does the same thing with rice. The legal vehicle chosen by these two close partners of Canada may not be the same as one, the one rather proposed by C-282. However, its effects are identical. In other words, protect essential sectors of the economy through legislation. That is the case in the United States with legislation called the Farm Bill. It protects and massively subsidizes American farmers. This farm bill also establish, establishes rather tariff rate quotas that restrict the amount of foreign sugar that can enter the U.S. market. I'm sure you agree with me, colleagues, that these restrictions and protections don't make the United States and Japan less in terms of trading nations. They are capable of concluding excellent free trade agreements. Colleagues, supply management is closely linked to Canadian trade policy and it has been so for more than 50 years. Established in 1972 by the Liberal government under Pierre Elliott Trudeau, it's based on three pillars, production control, producer price regulation, and import control at the border with tariff quotas. Without control over the quantity of supply-managed products imported, effective production planning cannot happen. Supply management 
would not be able to fulfill its mission of matching supply and demand. Going beyond the issues of tariff rate quotas and international regulations, I want to remind you of what Bill C-282 really means for tens of thousands of family farms. Farms that create nearly 350,000 jobs in our country. C-282 allows farmers to have predictability over their income and to continue to produce essential foodstuffs on Canadian soil for Canadians while avoiding the erosion of supply management. For instance, according to the Canadian Dairy Commission, dairy farmers who have seeded a total of 18% of their domestic market have seen their numbers drop dramatically, going from 12,500 farms in 2012 to about 9,500 in 2023. That is considerable. We heard in committee that the decline of the number of family farms is leading the decline of our rural areas and the depopulation of our villages. That is what we're talking about. Bill C-282 is a unique way for our negotiator, negotiators rather, to uphold Parliament's clearly expressed desire, which is to fully protect supply management in future negotiations. If the Senate votes in favour of this amendment, it will run counter to the will of the government, the House, the elected House, and the overwhelming majority of Canadians. According to an Abacus data survey published in 2023, over 90% of Canadians support supply management. That is why, Honourable Senators, dear colleagues, I urge you to reject the committee's report so that this chamber may study Bill C-282 in its original form. Thank you for your attention.